Hello everyone, so uh, this is the second module for our midterm. It's all about data management or statistics. At the end of the lesson, the student can use variety of statistical tools to process and manage numerical data, use the methods of linear regression and correlation to predict the value of a variable given certain conditions, and advocate the use of statistical data in making important decisions. Our first lesson under this module is Introduction to Statistics. Let us start with this big question. What is statistics? In your own words, how do you define statistics? What is statistics? So can you have a minute to please think of what is statistics? Statistics is the study of how to collect, organize, analyze, and interpret numerical information from data. This one is actually my favorite description of what statistics is. It is the study of how we make sense of data. So it implies that statistics not just the collection of data, but on how we apply or how we use this data. Another essential question is why statistics is important. Why statistics is important? Maybe you have your own reasons, you have your own answer there. Yes, and here are the importance of statistics. Statistics enable us to characterize persons, objects, situations, and phenomena, explain relationships among variables, formulate objective assessments and comparisons, and more importantly, make evidence-based decisions and predictions. And of course, for anyone, for any individual, statistics is important because a knowledge of statistics can help anyone discriminate between fact and fiction in everyday life. It enables a uh, an individual to distinguish between fake news and real news. Let us now proceed to the two branches of statistics, descriptive and inferential statistics. So what do you mean by descriptive stat? Descriptive statistics organize, summarize, and communicate a group of numerical observations. It describes large amounts of data in a single number or in just a few numbers, while inferential stat use sample data to make general estimates about the larger population. Inferential statistics infer or make an intelligent guess or generalization about the whole population. Here are some examples of statements under descriptive and inferential statistics. For descriptive statistics, we have majority, or that is 85% of the participants are female, while 15% are male. Another one is families in town A have average monthly income of 17,200 pesos. And the mean weight of students in school X is 54.8 kilograms. Under inferential, we have it is predicted that the number of female students will increase by 15%. Families in town B has significantly higher average monthly income than those families in town A. And our last example under inferential stat, the feeding program in the school X is effective in increasing students' weight. You have noticed that under descriptive statistics, we have used frequency and percentage. We also have the mean or average. So these are under descriptive statistics. Uh, 
the measures of uh, central tendency, the measures of variability, and the measures of other position are under descriptive statistics. While when we do prediction, when you do estimation, and you make a conclusion using hypothesis testing, that is under inferential statistics. Let us now discuss some basic terms in statistics. So we have the first pair, sample and population. Sample, or po let's start with population. Population includes all possible observations under study or investigation, while sample is just a part, okay, or a set of, of observations drawn from the population of interest. Let us identify the population and sample given a research title. So, for example, we have a research title, Attitude Towards Online Learning and Academic Performance of Freshman Students of ABC University. What is the sample or what's the population in this uh, title or in this research? So, for the population, we have all freshmen students of ABC University, while the sample is uh, the selected freshman students of ABC University. Maybe you select by gender, you get some portion of the male and female. You can also select by using sampling techniques like simple random, stratified, or convenience. Okay. Okay, so you have to try this. So please identify the population and sample in this research title. Okay, so let's check your work for the population. The population is all college students of XYZ Academy, while the sample is the selected college students of XYZ Academy. Maybe you use some profile variables like gender, year level course, or you have actually use some uh, sampling techniques like simple random, stratified, or cluster, or convenience, or systematic sampling techniques. So the next pair of basic terms that we're going to discuss uh, is actually parameter versus statistic. Okay, so what is a statistics and what is parameter? So a parameter is a numerical measure that describes an aspect of a population, while a statistics is a numerical measurement or measure that describes an aspect of a sample. Let us use uh, the same research title and then we're going to actually identify the parameter and uh, statistics. Okay, so we know that uh, parameter and statistics are uh, numerical measurements. Okay, so what is actually the data to be collected or to be actually obtained from these uh, results? Okay, so for the parameter, it's all about the average grade or the, the academic performance of the students, of all freshmen students of ABC University. While the statistics is still the average grade, but this time of selected freshmen students of ABC University. So that's the difference between parameter and statistics. Parameter is for population, while statistics is for sample. They are both numerical measurements. So to check your understanding, you have to try this. So in this research title, what's the parameter and what's the possible statistic? So you have a minute to actually uh, answer this. Okay, so let's check your work. So for the parameter, the parameter is the well-being score or the mean uh, well-being score of all college students of XYZ Academy. Uh, since this is a well-being, something like a qualitative, but it can be measured using a standardized test, okay? And you have actually maybe a scale or a Likert scale and you can get the score or the mean of those uh, scores about well-being. And for a statistic, we have the mean well-being score of selected college students okay, of the XYZ Academy. Another basic term is in statistics is the word 
variable. So what is a variable? Variables are observations of physical, attitudinal, and behavioral characteristics that can take on different values. Behavioral scientists often study abstract variables such as motivation, self-esteem, and attitudes. And what are these examples of variables? So variables, examples are gender, nationality, your level, attitude towards math, well-being score, age, pulse rate, self-confidence level. These are actually variables. Variables are categorized into two, quantitative and qualitative variables. Quantitative variable has a value or numerical measurement for which operations such as addition or averaging make sense while qualitative variable describes an individual by placing the individual into a category or group, such as male or female. Here are some examples of quantitative and qualitative variables. Quantitative variables examples are distance travel to school, number of active cases, temperature, well-being score, monthly income. For qualitative, we have nationality, course, year level, street number, and self-esteem level. Under quantitative or numerical variable, they can further be classified into discrete or continuous, something you count, something you measure. So what is discrete? Discrete observations can take an only specific values like whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, or including 0. No other values can exist between these numbers, and these are variables are usually obtained through counting. While continuous variable uh, observations can take an, a full range of values like uh, with decimal places or real numbers, an infinite number of potential values exist. And these variables or data are obtained through measuring. Here are some examples of discrete and continuous variable. For discrete, we have number of students in class, number of COVID-19 active cases, number of units enrolled in this semester, and we have continuous like time used to complete a task, noon temperature in Tugigarao City, and height of students in a math class. So in this activity, you're going to apply the concepts you have just learned, okay? And uh, we will actually check your answers in this uh, activity during our synchronous session. So may I just read, okay, the problem here or the activity? ABC te Television Station wants to know the proportion of TV owners in Santiago City who watch the station's new program at least once a week. The station asks a group of 1,000 TV owners in Santiago City if they watch the program at least once a week. And then we have here the questions so you're going to answer this and we will check during our synchronous session so now let us discuss another pair of uh, terms we have what we call independent variable and dependent variable usually this is found in a quasi experimental or experimental studies so what is in independent variable Independent variable is the variable that affects or explains, often manipulated by the researcher. The treatment or intervention, intervention that is used in a study, while dependent variable is actually the variable that's being affected or explained, what is measured as an outcome in a study, and its, its values depends on the independent variable. In this pure experimental research, insecticidal property of acacia seeds and bark against termites, what's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable? For the independent, it's actually the treatment. So in this study, what's the treatment? It's about it's actually the acacia seeds and bark. Okay. And then for the dependent variable, what is being measured? What's the outcome? It's actually the 
insecticidal property of these acacia seeds and parts and uh, the uh, data that actually to be collected here is actually the number of termites killed it's, it, that actually that measurement actually talks about the insecticidal property how about in these results enhancing student understanding of science concepts through flipped classroom approach so in this title what's the independent variable that is actually the cause and the dependent variable is actually the effect so in this study the independent variable is flip classroom approach it's actually the strategy being employed okay and the dependent variable is the effect that is actually the effect on a student understanding of science concept and it can be measured through their grades or their test scores how about this you have to try this one so what's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable in these results? The title is the effectiveness of mindfulness activities in improving students' socio-emotional well-being. And that can be actually uh, rephrased as to improving students' socio-emotional well-being through mindfulness activities. So what's the independent variable? independent variable is actually the strategy that is using mindfulness activities while the dependent variable is actually the thing it's actually the variable being measured or affected by this independent variable it's all about their socio-emotional well-being and that can be measured okay or can be actually manifested by their scores if this well-being uh, is actually uh, measured through a standardized test that gives us scores which will be actually interpreted as to their socio-emotional well-being let us now discuss one of the most important uh, thing to consider in choosing the appropriate test to be used in a study so we have here the levels of measurement or what we call scales of measurement the first one is what we call nominal so what is nominal level nominal level of measurement applies to data that consists of names labels or categories they are no implied criteria by which the data can be ordered from smallest to largest examples are gender nationality phone number course responses like yes or no the second level is what we call ordinal the ordinal level of measurement applies to data that can be arranged in order however differences between data values either cannot be determined or are meaningless examples are satisfaction level iq level self-esteem level degree of pain monthly income classification the third level of measurement is what we call interval the interval level of measurement applies to data that can be arranged in order in addition differences between data values are meaningful it has no inherent or natural zero starting point examples are temperature year and iq score and the highest level is what we call ratio the ratio level of measurement applies to data that can be arranged in order in addition both differences between data values and ratios of data values are meaningful data at the ratio level have a true zero and examples are age height test score salary and distance so in this activity you're going to actually identify each entry as to the level of measurement whether it's under nominal ordinal interval or racial level we will check your answers during our synchronous session and be ready for a pre-assessment and that's all for our first lesson under data management that is actually all about introduction to statistics god bless stay safe bye